Kosar Tashi Delik. My name is Uzra Zaya, and I welcome all of you to the Department of State's virtual Losar celebration. It's my honor to celebrate with communities throughout the Himalayan region and around the world in my first Losar, serving as the United States Special Coordinator for Tibetan Issues. I want to begin by emphasizing the U.S. government's unwavering commitment to Tibetans. I look forward to working with all of you as the special coordinator to achieve the many goals attached to this role. The United States stands with Tibetans, and we will work together to preserve Tibetans' distinct historical, cultural, religious, and linguistic identity and encourage global respect for Tibetans' human rights. The new year is an opportunity to reflect on the successes and challenges of the prior year and what lessons we can bring with us into the coming one. The year of the Iron Ox gave us much to learn from and yes, celebrate. And so I wanna take a moment to look back before I speak of the work ahead. We saw the Central Tibetan Administration's elections, truly a worldwide effort, elect a new slate of Tibetan diaspora leaders, including the second Sikyong. And for the first time ever, the CTA's Kashag has three women serving as Kahalons. These benchmarks are truly feats to celebrate. Each of us has felt the effects of the pandemic and has made sacrifices, especially our frontline workers. I want to recognize the Tibetan Nurses Association for their efforts within not only U.S. communities, but their relief trip to Dharamsala at the height of a second deadly wave in India early last year. Their work and the work of the many Tibetan Americans serving on the front lines of this pandemic to provide care to those who need it most shows us all the vital contributions that Tibetans give to the global community. We also see Tibetans actively working to preserve their distinct history, culture, religion, and language, and pass down that heritage to future generations in ways that Tibetans living in the People's Republic of China are unable to do. While young Tibetans in the PRC are increasingly sent to colonial-style boarding schools that deprive them of their history, culture, religion, and language, we see Tibetan Americans stepping up to share this vital education with their youth through weekend schools. Through this work, Tibetan traditions will continue to live on despite PRC attempts to extinguish them. This administration has made clear since day one that we are standing up for human rights. That includes holding the PRC accountable for human rights abuses, including in Xinjiang and Tibet, and for its dismantling of democratic institutions in Hong Kong. We will continue to hold Beijing accountable for the ongoing cruel treatment of its ethnic and religious minority groups. Now, as we enter the year of the water tiger, I'm eager to expand on the work of the special coordinators who came before me. When Secretary of State Blinken first announced my role, I shared with you some of my goals. Let me speak in more detail about what I hope to undertake this year. His Holiness the Dalai Lama once said during a Losar speech at McAllister College, in order to make this a more peaceful century, we need to make this a century of dialogue. I couldn't agree more. I will actively promote meaningful and direct dialogue without preconditions between the government of the People's Republic of China and the Dalai Lama or his representatives leading to a negotiated agreement on Tibet. I call on like-minded countries to join this effort and look forward to the discussions to come. Preservation is a key priority of the Biden-Harris administration and an all-encompassing goal of mine. Not only are Tibet's culture, religion, and language at risk, but so are the environment and water resources on the Tibetan Plateau. It is vital that we have a conversation about how stakeholders can responsibly manage Tibet's water and environmental resources 
to ensure they will long be available into the future and continue to benefit not only Tibetans, but their neighbors as well. I will work with Special Envoy Kerry, the Bureau of Oceans and International Environmental and Scientific Affairs, and other key partners to keep Tibet in the conversation of how we respond to climate change and encourage sustainable development that respects indigenous culture while protecting the environment. Access to Tibet is vital. Barriers to access have divided families, obfuscated human rights abuses, and left a large portion of the region and its people isolated from genuine discourse and responsible growth. The United States is asking the PRC to reciprocate the access PRC officials and other PRC nationals enjoy here in the United States by permitting U.S. diplomats and other officials, journalists, and tourists to enter the Tibetan Autonomous Region and other Tibetan areas unhindered to see for themselves how Tibetans live, work, worship, and celebrate their culture. Families also must be able to reconnect without reprisal. The recent hearing by the Congressional Executive Commission on China concerning the Beijing Olympics and the faces of repression highlighted retaliation by the PRC government against family members in the PRC for their relatives' actions abroad. The PRC must not only cease its harassment, intimidation, and surveillance of Tibetan diaspora communities in the United States and elsewhere, but must stop its practice of punishing family members living in the PRC in retaliation. I look forward this year to meeting with more Tibetans to discuss these and other important issues. Thank you for attending our celebration. I wish you all a happy, healthy, and prosperous New Year. I'm thrilled that we'll now hear a few remarks from Secretary Blinken on this auspicious occasion. On behalf of the United States, I offer my warmest wishes to those celebrating Losar. The United States honors the strength and resilience of the Tibetan community here in America, across the Himalayan region, and around the world. We remain committed to standing with Tibetans as they work to preserve their historic, linguistic, religious, and cultural heritage. Tibetans, like all people, have the right to practice their customs and pass them on to future generations. This includes teaching and speaking the Tibetan language, selecting their religious leaders without interference, and freely celebrating holidays and cultural events like Losar. Supporting these human rights is a priority for the United States. Last year, I was honored to meet with a representative of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, and other Tibetan leaders in New Delhi. And in December, I designated Undersecretary of State Azra Zaya as the U.S. Special Coordinator for Tibetan Issues. In this role, Azra will lead our efforts to advance the human rights of Tibetans and address their humanitarian needs around the world. In this new year, we look forward to continuing our close cooperation with Tibetan leaders on these and other important issues. And this week, we're honored to celebrate Losar with you. Tashi Delek, may the new year be filled with joy and peace. With many thanks to Secretary Blinken for his continued support and engagement on Tibet, including by entrusting me with the role as Special Coordinator for Tibetan Issues. I'd like now to introduce representative of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration to North America, Namgyol Chodup, for his remarks. This is how Tibetans greet each other on Losa. It translates roughly as expressing auspicious greetings of prosperity, magnificent health, and eternal happiness. In this festive spirit of renewed hope and inspiration, I would like to wish everyone a very happy Losa. I'm especially honored to participate in the annual Losa celebration hosted by the State Department. I want to thank Secretary Anthony Blinken, Undersecretary and Special Coordinator for Tibetan Issues, Azra Zaya, for expressing their solidarity with the Tibetan people. Growing up in one of the Tibetan settlements in South India, I have very fond memories of Losa, how as children, 
we used to count the days before Losa, just as children here do before Christmas. Losa is also like Thanksgiving, being grateful for what we have, a time of family get-together. Although the way Losa is practiced and celebrated has evolved more so in exile due to both forced and voluntary displacement, it still retains the basic cultural and spiritual significance. Losar is not just the start of a new year. It means something deeper, more profound, a transition to something hopeful and inspirational. Losar is the celebration of having lived another year, abandoning all the negative forces and thoughts and channeling in all our positive energy to make the year ahead a more meaningful and a blessed one. We dress in our newest and best clothes dine on the most delicious fruits and drinks, do and say things that bring us the most joy. Children are told not to say, think or do bad things on Losa. In other words, our body, speech and mind is reset to channel in the most positive energy. All the festivities and offerings associated with Losa are prepared and conducted so as to set the most auspicious environment. The first day of the Losa is typically devoted to spiritual activities and sometimes referred to as Lama's Losa. In Dharamsala, the leaders would congregate at the main temple to pay their respects and offer Losa greeting to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Ordinary Tibetan would make the first and the best offerings in front of the altar. The second or the third day would involve propitiating the local deities and spiritual forces through purification ceremonies and prayers, which culminates with the raising of new prayer flags and the planting of a flagpole to reinforce positive life forces and elements. Then begins the communal feastings and get-togethers, which used to last about a month or so in the past. Today, if the Tibetan inside Tibet were granted one loss of wish, the overwhelming response would be to see and hear His Holiness the Dalai Lama. We Tibetans living in the free world are so blessed and lucky to hear and practice His teachings in our daily lives. So this Losa, as we channel in all our positive energy, I urge everyone to make a Losa resolution that we would do our best to live by and practice the full principle commitment of His Holiness the Dalai Lama in order to achieve or realize his vision of making the 21st century a century of peace and dialogue. This is the best gift, Losa gift, we can give ourselves to our brothers and sisters inside Tibet and to the rest of the world. And before I conclude, I would like to thank all the wonderful people at the State Department, our team at the ICT and Office of Tibet, Tibetan Scholarship Program students, and the Tibetan community from Santa Fe and Chicago for making this a special Losar event. Losar Sam. Thank you, Representative Chodup, for your remarks. Losar is a time of opportunity and new beginnings, and so I'm particularly happy to introduce a group of Tibetan American children performing traditional Tibetan song and dance that they've learned through weekend Tibetan cultural schools. We're proud to see Tibetan traditions freely and regularly passed from one generation of Tibetan Americans to the next. I hope you all enjoy this glimpse of Tibetan culture. <laughs> Thank you. 
With many thanks to our wonderful performers and their teachers. I want to shift to introduce some of the current students and alumni of the Tibetan Scholarship Program 
a U.S. government-sponsored exchange program that provides Tibetans residing in India and Nepal the opportunity to obtain master's degrees from U.S. universities with the goal of educating and empowering future Tibetan leaders to contribute to the development of their communities. They will speak on what Losar means to them. Hi, I'm Yishi Benjur, studying computer science at University of Buffalo. Losar is a festival of happiness during which we Tibetans celebrate by being grateful to our spiritual leaders and our protectors. It is also a moment to get rid of all negativities and embrace a new beginning. On this beginning of the Water Tiger Year, I would like to take time to remember the kindness and the courage of all those Tibet supporters, especially the US government and its people, for their unwavering faith in the right of the truth, standing as our protectors. Los Angeles the Lake, and I wish you all a prosperous year ahead. Tashkile, I'm Thupten Rinzin and I am currently pursuing MBA program at the University of Arkansas. As we celebrate Tibetan New Year, I feel that our Tibetan struggle is prolonged by another year. With that, I will have a greater responsibility to shoulder to work for our Tibetan cause. So as a young Tibetan on this closer, I am committed to intensify and amplify my efforts towards working for our Tibetan cause. Thank you so much and once again, Losar Deshtile. Losar to me means being with my loved ones and celebrating new beginnings. But more than that, it is an occasion for me uh, to honor our unique Tibetan culture. And at this point in our history, it is something that brings Tibetan from all walks of life around the world uh, together and reconnect us with our identity, our past, and uh, let us think about our future. Tashtoye and happy Loser, everyone. My name is Tenzin Urgen, currently studying at University of Northern Iowa. Uh, Loser, I see it as another opportunity to connect with my roots. As during Loser, uh, we gather with our family members and relatives. And uh, usually we celebrate it in a traditional way, which includes uh, beginning our first day of New Year with prayer for all the sentient beings to having uh, Tibetan sweet rice and enjoying the Tibetan circle dance together. Thank you so much and happy Losar once again. Losar Tashtile. My name is Sonam and I'm doing my master's in environmental science at Rutgers University. Celebrating Losar holds memories of waking up excited before dawn, wearing our nicest Tibetan traditional dresses and looking forward to wonderful Tibetan cuisine. So Losar is that day which brings me closer to Tibet and my culture. It is the day to celebrate and to take pride in our roots. So happy Losar once again. Touch the lay, my name is Bema Dolker. I'm pursuing my master's in education at the University of Arkansas. For me, Losar is much more than a celebration. It allows me to pause and reflect on my previous year and it awakens my hope to start fresh, progress and evolve as a better person. And I would like to take this opportunity to wish you all happy Losar. Hello and Tashle everyone. Losa means taking a break from your daily responsibilities to spend time with your loved one and to celebrate your accomplishments and to express your gratitude. And I take this opportunity to thank His Holiness the Dalai Lama, US government and people of the United States and wish you all a very happy Losa. And may this year bring you lots of happiness, good health and prosperity. I'm Tenzin Nima and I'm studying Masters in Clinical Psychology at University of Northern Iowa. Tashtile, my name is Tenzin Chokhan and I'm doing my Masters in Cybersecurity at Georgia Institute of Technology. Since the inception of the Tibetan Scholarship Program in 1988, 475 students have graduated and they continue to serve the Tibet and the global community at large. On behalf of all the TSP alumni, Tibetans inside and outside Tibet, I would like to thank the State Department, the American people, for the sustained support towards higher education of Tibetan people. We hope that the State Department will continue to advocate for the cause of Tibetan people. On this Tibetan New Year of Water Tiger, I wish you all a happy and prosperous Lausanne. Thanks to all of you watching, as well as those who contributed to these festivities. Those in the United States and the Himalayan region have never been more closely connected than they are today. On this celebration of Losar, I'm thankful for the opportunity to acknowledge that bond with all of you and to look ahead toward its continued growth in the coming year. 
Losar Tashi Delet.